Hi everyone, my name is Tanisha and today we are going to develop an AngularJS application for customer ticketing portal. Now what are we building today? A basic customer ticketing portal which can view different tickets created by the user uh, based on categories. We can add new ticket to the portal. We can control the visibility of user details on the tickets and we can validate forms using AngularJS form controls. How will we do it? We make a list of tickets based on the categories, say open tickets, closed tickets and rejected tickets and display them. Then we create a form for the user wherein the user can add feed, wherein the user can add details about the ticket and uh, submit the ticket uh, onto the portal. And then we validate the form whether, when the user is filling it, whether uh, the fields are empty or not, whether the fields entered are valid or not. What will we use to build it? Uh, we are going to use AngularJS, Bootstrap, Bootstrap Icon Library. The editor we are going to use is Sublime Text 2 and the resources will be images. Now the basic layout of the application is in this manner where we have a button which will help us add a new ticket. We will have the categories of tickets displaying the different tickets added to the system. When you click on the add new ticket form, uh, a form will be displayed to the user with various controls and there will be a button to submit your ticket. Let us look at the code of how we have developed. This is how our application will look like. We have the active tickets here. We have the completed tickets, the rejected tickets. And here we have a new ticket button. When you click on this button, you have a form here, which the user will be able to fill. Let's say I add my data here. As you can see, when I'm adding my data, the name gets updated in this column here. This is done using ng binding, which I will be describing while using the code. Now, as you can see, my email is not valid since I have not added the, the correct email address. So it gives me a validation saying invalid email address. These are all part of form validation, which I'll be explaining. There are also other validations of empty. Say my user is required. That is, I cannot keep it empty. Those validations can also be added. So as you can see here, I've added in my details. Now, um, this uh, checkbox here will basically give me a control whether I want to display my username onto the ticket or not. So once I check this uh, uh, input control, it will allow the username to be displayed on the screen. If not, it will not allow. So when I submit, my ticket will be added to the active tickets. As you can see here, the ticket is added and the email address is also visible. Let us try hiding the email address with a new entry. Now I uncheck this and when I submit the email address is hidden. So these there are various kinds of form validations which we can add. So uh, before I before I show you the code, what I would like to describe is uh, Angular JS form validations. Now Angular JS offers various client side form validations. It monitors the state of the form and input fields, say input text area select etc., and lets you notify the user about the current state. AngularJS also holds information about whether they have been touched, modified or not. You can use standard HTML5 attributes to validate the input or you can make your own validation functions as well.
Now we have various forms, form and input states. We have untouched, touched, pristine, dirty, invalid and valid. Various determine all these uh, tell you the different states that your input control has been in. You also have various form states. These were your input field states. Uh, your form altogether also has state which uh, tells you whether your form altogether is dirty or not. Like when you want to submit your form, you will check the state of the form. Say valid. Now the form will be valid when all the controls inside your form is valid. So it's like a consolidated state for the form. These states basically just uh, give us a boolean value of true or false, which is uh, very obvious that if it is dirty, it will give you true and if it is not, it will give you false. Now to create your own uh, validation functions, it's a, it's a bit tricky with AngularJS. You have to add a new directive to your application, which is a custom directive, and deal with the validations inside a function with some uh, specified arguments. But we can also create custom validations. Now, along with the uh, form validations, there is also another built-in directive that we are going to look at, which is an ng model directive. Now, the ng model directive basically binds the value of an input field to a variable created in AngularJS. I just displayed this over here, wherein you can see this username, as I change here, gets affected over here as well. So, this is a two-way uh, binding, which is which is done using the ng model directive. Now let me walk you through the code of how this application is developed. I have my HTML here and my JS code here. And as described in the previous uh, videos, we have we are going to add our libraries in our script tags, which is Bootstrap and jQuery and AngularJS. Now we have our main app directive here, which tells us, which binds us uh, with the AngularJS app model over here then we have a controller which basically uh, it fires all the function that you describe within the controller part of the js file now we have a button for new ticket over here and this is a section which displays all our tickets open closed and rejected now we have another uh, controller over here we it's better always to segregate your code in different controllers it uh, increases your readability and testability of your code so the, the this code over here helps us switch between panels and uh, is selected and select tab are the functions that we have written to switch between panels this is my uh, select tab. So when I select a tab, I set the tab number. Then when I click on the tab, it checks which tab is active and accordingly switches the tabs. So that is my panel controller. Well, that is what my panel controller does. Now uh, we have uh, used built-in directives like ng controller, ng repeat. ng repeat is what we are well versed with by now. And we have expressions over here. These are the expressions. This is how we display our code on the screen. Uh, this is a, what do you say, object format that we have used. Uh, this portion displays the details of the tickets. Now, as I was telling you, we are controlling the visibility of whether to allow to display the email of the user on the screen or not. That is how, that is what we do using this directive, ng show. If your uh, user, allow user is uh, set to false or true, based on that, this is hidden. So this is basically how we display our tickets uh, on the screen. Let us see how the form is created that we uh, use to submit the ticket. Now, for creating a form, the first uh, main uh, thing that we have to do here is create a form, form tag which will have your name. This name is basically used to uh, access all the inner components and check their states as well as check their error states. Now the form will have uh, its own set of validations which you are going to use, which you are going to access using the error object. Okay. So our first input that we have here is the username. Now I have used the required tag which basically means that all these values have to be filled in. 
we cannot have any of these values empty so as you saw uh let me show you once again if those values are empty it will uh, throw me an error like you can see email is required username is required that is how our validations work so that is what is done by this required tag i have used uh, <coughs> excuse me i have used the style tag to add a color in a message uh, whatever message we need to display and to do that i am using the form validations now here you can see email is basically my model as you can see here email name these are my models so when you use the ng model directive it binds this uh, uh, this object to your js as well as you can use the same object on your html also so as you saw when i removed the email from the field over there these spans get added and they get added because we have added the required tag and our required tag validation is added here so this tells the html that this uh, span has to be shown using the ng show directive because the required error has occurred and hence that particular message will be displayed so these are the various ways in which we can use form validations we have dirty we have invalid pristine all of them are used for different uh, reasons like if your uh, form is dirty say the user has already started adding and then some server issue occurs you don't want the data, the form data to be lost so you would want to save it so there are various uh, ways or various use cases where your form validations can be used we have another select tag which also has the required uh, attribute which makes it compulsory to be added by the user and this is my model ng model that gets bind as you saw when i add the data for this uh, particular input it get it gets appended here as well so this is my two way binding right now there's one more thing that i would like to tell you all is uh, all these ng models i access in my js file as well right this is how i can use the uh, use these ng models in my js file you can directly access them and the values available because we are using an ng model so yeah see this is the um, another model show user that we use and uh, here we are using the show user to control whether the email should be visible on the screen or not let me just show you that ha uh -huh, here so this is my ng model which gets set and here i'm using it to uh add conditions on my display we can add various uh, validations for css as well now i have added the condition wherein that if my username is invalid and my email is also invalid my submit button will be disabled it will not you will not be able to click on the button this is the ng disable directive which is yet another built in directive of angular js so as i as you can see on the screen as well this button is disabled because my form is invalid now when i click on the submit uh, button i have a built in ng click directive which calls this function in my javascript uh, file this function will pick all my model values all of them that i have described in my pop up and it will push it into my open tickets array open tickets is an array of objects which i am using to display on my screen using the ng repeat directive ng repeat also has various other uh, filters that you can use say order by group by all of that so this is a very simple application which just tells you uh, the basic use of form validations and ng model so we have uh, gone through what uh, model binding is in angular js how we have a two way binding how we can use it in html as well as in our javascript file 
how we can create a form using angular js controls you can add in all other html controls that you want there was one thing that i missed out on mentioning that if you want to use angular js form validations and uh, you don't want to uh, you don't want html5 uh, also has its own built in validations so you don't want html5 validations to hinder with your angular js validations so this no validate uh, key is used on your form tag which will tell your browser ki hey i don't want to use html5 validations i want my angular js to validate my form so this is very important while adding validations using angular js so we saw how we created a form and added controls we saw how we did form validations using angular js now we also used scope in angular js scope basically just gives you a defined object within your controller this is called the dependency injection and the dollar scope is a service that angular js uses we will go in depth in service in our later tutorials where i'll describe in detail what a service is why do we use it and uh, how it is it uh, done this is just a basic example of injection of a service and use of a service so basically when you add in scope you don't need to um access your variables using the model support say for example here is my model here is my controller so controller has an object say support now i don't need to refer to all my variables that i'm using inside using support object because i have already scoped it so all these uh, ob all these variables that i'm using are in my scope so i can directly access my open tickets which i have done over here i don't need to use support as a uh, variable key to access my variables so scoping is used for uh, many other reasons there is nested scoping there is parent scoping uh, there are various uses of using scopes which we will see in our later tutorials so we just we just saw an overview of uh, what a scope is it's like a a, a defined uh, space for your variables now your scope for uh, one controller will not be accessible in the other controller and there are many other uh, parameters which are affected with scoping we saw a few more built in directives and i just explained the one or two filters that also could be added to our code we can uh, we are going to also look at uh, building custom directives in our later tutorials we saw built in directives like ng app ng controller ng repeat similar manner we can create our own directives which will have a defined html structure which will do a defined task which will have its own controller and stuff like that we can create our own filters dependency injection is i give you a small example of dollar scope there are many other services that angular js offers which can be injected and there are various rules which are supposed to be followed for dependency injection building your own services like dollar scope you can create your own services you can create services for calling apis for anything altogether we can create factory methods using angular js which will which will help you reuse your code add modularity to your code angular routing which is used for changing your state state maintenance url redirection etc so that's all for this tutorial guys thank you so much